Hey, this is Horner, and we're going to look at this problem, which is the 2004 uh, AP Physics B free response question number one. And in this problem, we've got a roller coaster ride. You've got a little car that goes up to point A, comes all the way down the hill, goes through a loop, and then comes back out the other side. They want us to figure out uh, a point P, so you're going to have to label that point, point P, that um, where the car has maximum speed. So we know that the maximum energy here is up at the top. So this is the maximum potential energy due to gravity. And so at the very bottom is going to be where our point P should be because that's where our uh, kinetic energy is going to be the highest. So that's where our kinetic energy is going to be a max. And if that's correct, then that's where our speed is going to be the biggest. So really all you have to put is just a point P right here. Next thing they want us to do is figure out what is the value of that speed. So we've already kind of alluded to the fact that we have to think about um, the conservation of energy. So you really need to state it. So we'll have to go say uh, potential energy uh, at the beginning plus the kinetic energy at the beginning is equal to the potential energy at the end plus the kinetic energy at the end. And we know that the kinetic energy at the top is zero because there's no up and down motion, even though there's left and right. We're only worried about up and down. And there's no potential energy at the bottom because we're all the way down on the ground. So now we can set up our equation. This will be one half m. Oops, sorry, it won't be one half. It will be, um, oops, let's put that back. Let's do mgh is equal to, and that's the original height, uh, one half m v final squared. So we're looking for that final speed. Notice, as always, our masses can cross off, so we're going to get rid of those. And now we're left with our maximum speed, so that's max speed is equal to the square root of 2 times g times that height. So all we did here is we just multiplied both sides by 2, took the square root of both sides, and we come up with this equation. Let's go ahead and plug everything into the equation. So we've got 2 times 10. Notice that our height here is 90 meters, and that's where that comes from. And if you plug everything in, you should end up with 42.4 meters per second. And that is your final answer for part A, uh, double I. All right, so let's move on to the next part. It says calculate the speed. Uh, of the car uh, at point B. So they've given us uh, VB. So we've got to think about this one just a little bit before we actually try to start it. And one of the things that we need to look at is what kind of energy are we, uh, do we have at A and what do we have at B? And notice that at A, we do have all potential energy. But at B, we have both potential energy and kinetic energy. So here we're going to say potential energy at A, this is potential energy at B, and the kinetic energy at B. So let's go ahead and write an equation using all this. We're going to have to scroll back down here uh, if we want to find the speed of the car at point B. So I'm going to just quickly redraw the track. So we've got that, we come back down, then we go through this hoop, and they want to know what is the speed right here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at everything on this side. So I know that I have m g h at a, and that should be equal to m g h at b. So that is this guy right here, plus one half the mass times the velocity at b squared. So now we've got everything we need. We're getting our point for talking about uh, conservation of energy. That's what this equation shows. You have to show this equation. If you just go on to the next thing, it will not work. Um, we need to go ahead now and let's get rid of our m's, since all the m's are the same, since the mass of that little car doesn't change. And uh, we can now go through and solve for vb squared. Let's first subtract this from both sides. So we're going to have g, the height at a minus g, the height at b, should be equal to one-half of v, b squared. Let's go ahead and factor out a g uh, when we do the, and multiply both sides by 2. So now we're going to have 2 times the quantity g times uh, the quantity h, a, so this should be an a, 
minus HB, and that should be equal to VB squared. Now we're just going to flip both things, make it a little easier to see. So this is VB, don't know why this won't work, is equal to, we have to take the square root of both sides because of the square, and now I can put all this underneath the, uh, underneath the radical, so that's 2G times the height at A minus the height at B, and that is our equation that we have. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. This is the square root of 2 times 10 times the height at A, which we know is 90 meters from our uh, picture that we had earlier, minus, and then the height of this uh, little hoop here is uh, 50 meters. And if you do all that math, you should end up with a speed of 28 0.3 meters per second. That's part B. Let's go on with part C. Uh, we're going to clear this off. We'll move on down to part C. It says, on the figure of the car below, draw and label the vectors to represent the forces in the car when it's upside down at point B. So we uh, start up, go up to A, come down, we do the loop, and they want to know what is uh, or what are all the forces on the car right here. And there's really only two forces that we worry about. We know that mg is the first one we always draw, so it goes straight down. But because there is a surface here, and so I'm just going to draw the surface of the track that the car is touching, then we know that there is also a normal force. And I do realize that there's a centripetal force, but we don't write fc anywhere on this picture. We just write mg and the normal force. Those are the two nor, uh, two just regular forces. Remember, FC is going to be the sum of these forces. So we've drawn this picture, and I think we've got everything we need for it. You actually get three points for that. You get one point for each one of these vectors, and then you get one additional point for not writing anything extra, which is probably a good thing. Uh, they want to know all the forces. Calculate the magnitude of all the forces um, identified in C. So we need to first find out what is the weight. So let's find out what mg is. mg is just equal to 700 kilograms times 10. And so that gives us 7,000 newtons. So that one was pretty easy. For the next part, we've got to find n. So this is where it gets a little more tricky. Let's think about the sum of the forces in the y direction. We know that this thing is going around a curve. so it's going upside down around a curve, so we're going to have to say that we must have MAC, okay? Um, and remember that MAC is really equal to MV squared all over R. So what are the two forces? We have MG and N, so we're going to say N plus MG should be equal to MV squared over R. Um, now what we need to do is go ahead and say rearrange this and n should be equal to mv squared over r minus mg. At this point we need to go ahead and just plug everything in. So our normal force is equal to the mass of the car which we said was 700. We found the speed earlier at that point was 28 meters per second. We have to square it because of the square here. And then the radius, or the R value here, is 20 meters. Um, now we have to subtract off the, the weight that we had earlier, which is 7,000. And if you do all that math, you should end up with a normal force of 21,000 newtons. And that is uh, letter C, uh, part I and part II. So you've got a picture to draw and then you've got the uh, the other part to go through. It says, now suppose that friction is negligible, is not negligible, so now you have some friction. How could the loop be modified to maintain the same speed at the top of the loop as found in B? Justify your answer. So I guess there's a couple of things we can think about here. Um, originally, this is what it looks like, and if there's no friction, it makes it. If there's friction, I know that I'm going to lose some energy due to friction, which means it won't be going fast enough here. So I need more energy. Oops, energy. I need more energy. To get more energy, uh, I can do one of two things. One of the things that I can do is I can make this go up really high. So I could make 
pill A higher, or I could make, or I could make uh, the loop, or make the loop closer to the ground. Uh, and in order to justify, since they want us to justify, we just say um, either. So we can write e i t h either will um, increase. Oops, increase the energy. So really, a will increase the energy. Uh, making a bigger will increase the energy, or decreasing the height will compensate for the energy loss due to friction. So either of those would be fine. I'd probably just make the hill bigger. That makes it a lot easier. And then um, that way you don't have to fight with trying to figure out a good explanation for making this hill a little bit flatter, a little bit shorter. And that is uh, the end of this question.